Hello everyone, this is Mrs. Diaz to teach you about lesson 4.2, reflecting on warming of different surfaces. For today's lesson, you're all only going to need good listening skills, good observational skills, and remember that we need to be thinking as sciences when we're listening to this lesson. So I'm ready to begin. Let's begin. So in this session, we're just going to talk about graphing the colored surfaces model. And in this uh, section, we have a, an investigation question. So our investigation question is, why does one surface on Earth get warmer than another when sunlight shines on them for the same amount of time? And in thinking about this lesson, I want you to think about how uh, weather scientists think. Okay, that needs to be our focus for this lesson. And going back to your previous lesson, uh, you we learned about color surfaces model that was used in the last lesson, and it gave us a lot of information that we were able to graph and talk about. So we can use graphs to organize the temperature data we've gathered from our observations of the colored surfaces model. Scientists want to make sure that what they observe one time is also what happens most of the time. One way they do this is by putting many observations together in one place so that they can see them all together. So we're trying to figure out why one surface on Earth gets warmer than another surface when sunlight shines on them for the same amount of time. From our reading, we thought that the color of a surface might have something to do with how much it heats up. And our observation can help us figure out cause and effect. So we're gonna compare the dark and pale surfaces when the light was on them for a longer amount of time. So we're gonna be returning back to the reference book. And in this reference book, we're gonna find out a lot of information regarding map models. And if you see the title, it says, Handbook of Models. And it's called a reference book. So how do we read a reference book? differently than other books. I'm going to show you how we read that. So the first thing we do is we look at the contents. This is the contents, this is a table of contents. And uh, today we will read about how scientists investigate one thing at a time. So if I look at the contents, I can see here that I can choose where I want to go. So I know that if I went to page four, it would be, it, it tells me it's going to be some things that are hard to investigate. If I want to go to page six, it's going to talk to me about models. If I go to page eight, it's going to talk about who uses those models and so on. So every section of this content tells me as a scientist who's investigating what part of the book I want to read about, right? So let's continue and see what we can learn as scientists. So models help scientists investigate one thing at a time. Often, the things scientists want to investigate are very complicated. There are a lot of things going on at once. That makes it hard to tell how one thing affects the other. When they want to know if just one thing affects another, scientists make models. Models are often simpler than the real thing. In a model, scientists make complicated things like weather simpler. So they use models to help them come up with conclusions. So if you see over here, you have a real water strider, which is an insect, and next to it is a model of that insect. So it's a model water strider. At the bottom, you see real river plants and next to it, you see a model of river plants, okay? So, in looking at this, 
and I'm reading the information, it tells me that water strider model, scientists made a model of a water strider. Water striders are little bugs that live in ponds. They can stand up and jump on top of the water. The scientists ask, how does a water strider jump on the water without sinking? The scientists found out that the water strider curved legs help it jump on the water without sinking. How did the model need a model to learn? Why did, the, did they need a model to learn about water striders? Water striders are animals with many body parts. Scientists had the idea that the water striders curved legs, so their curved legs, help them jump. They needed a simple model to test their idea. And how was the model like a real water strider? The model had long curved legs like a real water strider. How was the model different from a real water strider? Well, this model did not have a head or a body. It only had legs. The scientists only wanted to study one thing, how the water strider uses its legs to jump. So that's why it doesn't have, it only has the legs. Everything else, it did not need it because they're just looking, they're focusing on the legs. So let's discuss why scientists made the water strider and how it's similar to and different from the real thing. So at the top you see the real one and at the bottom you see the model. And as you see, the model does not have a body. It's really focusing on the legs. So I'm gonna show you two pictures and I'm going to ask you a question. And I'm gonna to wait to see what you say and I'm gonna think myself because I also want to know as a scientist what I think the answer is going to be. So, how could the scientists use the same model to investigate if water striders could jump if they had shorter legs? Why do you think so? Let's think about that question, right? So if they were investigating, so here, could the scientists use the same model to investigate if water striders could jump if they had shorter legs? So now they're looking at shorter legs. Why do you think so? What could they do differently? Have you figured it out? Let's think for a minute. Let's think. I'm thinking too. Hmm. I wonder. I hear some people saying it. Yes. So maybe they could make the legs on the model shorter and observe if they could jump. Could that be one of our answers? I think so. Because we're still, we're still focusing on the legs and jumping, right? Okay, so the next one's gonna be a little bit more tricky, but I know you can do it. And if not, that's okay, we're learning together. So the next one says, could the scientists use the same model, remember we're just focusing on the legs, to investigate if the things that the water striders eat help them jump? And why do you think so? So now something else, they're looking at something else. They're looking at if the things that the water striders eat help them jump. What do you think the answer will be for that one? Hmm, this one's a little bit tricky. So here actually the answer is no. The model does not eat or even have a head or body. So they could not feed it different things. So in order for, for that model to work, they would have to create something that it would help the animal eat, right? Like a mouth, like a head. But this model does not have that. So a scientist would not be able to use this model for that question. Very good. You guys really, really are getting it. Okay, so let's see what else we can find out. So here, we're investigating dark and pale surfaces. Scientists, let me move myself so you can see the slide better. Scientists use what they learn from their models to predict 
what they think they will observe in the real world, just like in our previous slides. We're going to use what we learned from our model to make predictions about the temperature of our own playground. Then we will go outside and check our predictions. Now, we're not in school, so what's gonna happen is when I'm done with this lesson, I want you to take an adult with you and go outside and you're going to be able to make these predictions and compare with the adult person that you go with, all right? So you don't have to do it right after the lesson. You could do it in the afternoon when, when, when an adult com comes home. I don't want you going out by yourself, all right? But remember, for right now, we're just pretending that we're in school and this is an activity that we would have done in our own playground. So, you're gonna find a surface outside with the sun shining on a dark and pale, with dark and pale parts. When you go outside and feel the temperature of both parts of the surface, which do you predict will feel warmer? The dark part or the pale part? And I want you to think about why you think that is so. All right, because scientists are always trying to figure out why things are that way. So here, I'm gonna show you a little picture with a little, um, instructions on what to do again you're going to go outside you're going to feel the dark and pale surfaces remember with an adult or a, a brother and sister an older brother and sister with your partner you're going to compare the temperatures by placing your hand on one part of the surface and the other part of the surface right and then try different surfaces to compare and then you can share your observation with the person that you're going with outside all right Okay, so, recording new ideas about different surfaces. What new ideas do you have about why one surface gets warmer than another surface? And when they are in the sun for the same amount of time. So you can draw this on a piece of paper with the results of what you, the activity that you did before of going outside, which you're gonna do after this lesson right or in the afternoon so here is a chart and I have added some information to our chart so that we have space to show our new ideas and how should we make these two surfaces different to show why one is warmer than the other okay so we can look at shorter time longer time and here's our chart with all the information that you already know. You know that here would be the nighttime, morning, afternoon. These are different types of temperature. So now our chart shows what we have figured out about one surface, why one surface can be warmer than another, even when sunlight is shining on them both. So here you see the completed chart. All right, so the longer the time, the hotter it's going to get. So, it says here in our key concept, dark surfaces get warmer than pale. Surfaces when light shines on them. Let me read that again. Dark surfaces get warmer than pale surfaces when light shines on them. So the darker the surface, the hotter it's gonna get. That's why in the summer, people try to wear light clothing because they say that if you wear dark clothing, you're gonna be hotter. So in the summer, it's always good to wear light colors. In the winter, we tend to wear darker colors. So that is also a good thing to know and remember. Right. So once again, we came to the end of our lesson. I will see you back for lesson 4.3. I hope everyone has a wonderful day and I'll be talking to you soon. Goodbye. Have a great day. Bye.